and welcome back. In this brief video, I'll talk about another post-colonial concept, orality. In most of the colonial experiences, orality is often juxtaposed against literacy, and it is in the colonial works, it is as represented as if the native cultures didn't have a written text or written languages, and they were necessarily oral cultures. But also inscribed in that description is this general idea as if orality was inferior to a written script or to written literacy. Now, this applies mostly in colonialism in the Caribbean and also in Africa because most African cultures were oral cultures and had oral traditions. But part of that orality and oral culture wasn't just a random thing. It was a whole system of signification and passage of knowledge from one generation to another. Ungugi Chiango gives a great example of that in as to how stories, legends, histories were passed from one generation to another. And when the epistemic and physical violence of colonialism disrupts that process, that is when the native cultures lose a lot of their history, a lot of their stories, a lot of their knowledge of themselves because it needs that living oral culture to survive and to be passed on to the next generation. And the circumstances become even more dire because the oral language culture and the native languages are eventually replaced by the colonial languages. And then when you adopt a colonial language, your idea of history and everything else is also informed by the written texts of the colonizers. So orality as a practice, as a cultural practice, as a mode of transmission of cultural and historical knowledge from one generation to another, highly depended upon the existence of a fully realized, fully formed national culture or regional culture in which everyone had their own place and stories were passed on from one generation to another. Now in post-colonial scholarship, a lot of scholars put their effort in recovering the lost oral traditions, in writing about them. If you read Fanon, you will see Fanon uh, ex explains in one of his essays on nationalism that the first phase of nationalistic writing is always the native writers going back to the people, going back to their own culture, retrieving it and re-articulating it in their art and in their writing. Now this doesn't apply so much to let's say places like India which already had highly developed written scripts and written languages and histories, but even there, against the dominant nationalistic and national literacy and text, the Subaltern Studies Collective, their project is to go and recover from within the nation the silenced oral traditions of the tribes, of the hill tribes. So even in post-colonial nation states where they do have national languages and written scripts, there are still histories and stories of oral cultures that were either replaced or forgotten because of the prominence of the written cultures instituted by the colonizers. Now, another stark example of this sense of doom of a dying oral tradition can be seen in the work of Muhammad Hussain Azad, the Delhi poet who was the first one to record the histories and lives of Urdu poets in his book called Abe Hayat. And in explaining his reasons, he tells us that as in 1858, at the Brit as the British reconquer, capture Delhi, he realized that the culture that he was a part of, in which there was poetry and it was passed on from one generation to another, there were public readings, and that the Urdu poetry depended upon that kind of patronage, but also on that transmission, could no longer have that because the culture was now being replaced by the British system. And he feels this sense of doom that all this knowledge would be lost. And that's why he records whatever he knows of the great poetic tradition of Urdu in a book called 
Abe Hayat, which means water of life. So overall, orality was originally mobilized by the colonizers to suggest in a binary structure as if it was inferior to a culture with a written script. And a lot of anthropologists also originally believed it until, of course, you know, Levi Strauss goes and writes his famous essay on the written script and its connection not to civilizational aspects of it, but to the rise of slavery and rise of oppression. And, and that is when the Western anthropology also starts acknowledging the existence and significance and importance of oral cultures. In post-colonial traditions, retrieving oral cultures, keeping them alive, and inscribing them maybe in writing is a huge movement in the Caribbean as well as in Africa and Asia. So these are some of my thoughts on orality in juxtaposition or in opposition to literacy or writing cultures. I hope this was useful. And if you have any questions, please post them in the comments and I'll try my best to answer those. And if you like what you see here, please do subscribe to the channel. And with that, thank you so much and peace and love.